Newton's third law is often stated this way, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The problem with this is it makes it sound like it's cause and effect, one thing happens then another. I think Newton would want to rewrite it maybe in this form. Uh, Newton's third law is about the interaction between objects. So if we have object A exerting a force on object B, object, object B must exert an equal, oppositely directed, and simultaneous force on object A. You should write this statement down and use it to guide you through the rest of this video. So pause this, write that down, and it will help you get uh, the answers to our Newton's third law questions. Ready? And so if your feet push down on the floor, what does the floor do? And so pause this, think about it, write your answer down, and here comes the answer. Pushes up on your feet with an equal force. Some people think the floor can't push on things. They think only people and machines and animals can push or pull, but inanimate objects can push or pull, and there's really no difference between the type of force they would apply. So the floor pushes up with an equal force. But can the floor push up on your feet with a force greater than your weight? Pause the video, read the choices, pick your answer. Here comes the answer. If you have not picked your own, you're going to get very little out of the time you spend watching this. Yes, and that's how you jump. And so when you jump, you push down on the floor with a force greater than your weight, but that doesn't make you go up. It's the floor pushing back up on you. You need an upward force to accelerate up into the air, and that's what makes you jump and Elmo. What is the force from that causes a car to accelerate down the road? So here I am in my Lamborghini, and so pause it, and you pick what you think is the best choice. Okay, ready? Again, if you haven't tried to pick it, you're wasting your time. And so it's the road. The road is pushing the car. You need all these things, but if you have A, B, C, and E, and you put the car on some very slick ice, you don't go anywhere because the road cannot push. Uh, think about it. The wheels are spinning this way. The tire pushes back on the road. Well, I need a force forward to make the car go, and so the road pushes back on the wheel. And so the tire... Uh, pushes on the road, the road pushes back with an equal, oppositely directed, and simultaneous force. It's the road that makes the car go along. What about somebody swimming across the pool? What is causing the force to make them go? Pause it and come up with your answer. Here's the answer. It's the water, of course. And so they push backwards on the water, and the water pushes forward on them. Sounds strange, but that is exactly what is happening. How about this? I have a force probe hooked to a ring stand, attached to a ring stand, and it's just going to sit there. I'm going to hook another force probe onto it, and I'm going to pull back. And so which one is going to show the greatest force? We'll view this on a graph. The one pulled by me, the one attached to the ring stand, both are going to be the same or either one. So pick your answer, pause this, think about it. Here it comes. Same force, right? If the teacher pulls with a force on the ring stand, the ring stand pulls back with an equal, oppositely directed, simultaneous force. And because these are force sensors, we can see that. Here's a movie of me actually doing this experiment. And so when I start pulling, can you tell which one I'm pulling on? No. The, each force sensor reads the same force uh, in magnitude, opposite in direction, and notice they move together, so they're simultaneous. Pretty fun to do. You can make fish, Christmas trees, and so on. And so this illustrates Newton's third law perfectly. How about this? If Earth pulls on the moon with gravity, causing it to orbit, what does the moon do to the earth? Pause this, read the choices, think about it, pick your answer. Okay, here we're back. And so the moon pulls on the earth with equal gravity causing it to orbit. You might have picked that it's pulling on the earth causing tides. That's true, 
but it doesn't pull on the Earth with less gravity. Uh, the tides are really caused by the difference in the strength of gravity from the moon on either side of the Earth. It has to be equal, causing it to orbit. Orbit what? Well, let's take a look. This is not to scale, but watch the moon go around in a circle. Watch the Earth. What is it doing? Can you see it wobbling a little? If we drew this to scale, you'd actually see the Earth going in a circle around a point about three-fourths of the way from the center. So the center would be going around like this. And uh, so if, even if you couldn't see the moon, you could tell it was there from its effect on the Earth. That's how we discover stars, uh, planets going around other stars. They cause the star to wobble like this, too. How about you? The Earth pulls on you with the force of gravity. What do you do? What's the reaction to this force? Pause it. We're back. Here's the answer. You pull on the Earth with an equal force of gravity. So if you have a weight of 800 newtons, that means the Earth pulls on you with 800 newtons. You pull back on the Earth with the same force. But when you jump into the air, you don't notice the Earth moving away and then back towards you. You go up and fall back down to the Earth. How come the Earth doesn't respond to your equal force? It's because the masses are different. The accelerations are different. And so the forces are the same. Notice the force is the same size. Mass of the Earth is so much bigger than the person. You get a tiny acceleration, effectively zero, when you're talking about the Earth. And then for the person, a noticeable acceleration. So if your instinct is, hey, there's something different, you're right, but it's not the forces, it's the accelerations because the masses are different. How about when you shoot a gun? Which receives the greatest force? Pause it. Okay, got your answer. Here we go. It right, is the down. same, right? But what is different? The masses are the same. And so the bullet accelerates a lot more, but the gun does accelerate, as this woman discovers when she fires the gun. It does accelerate back, but it's not going to kill you, right? At least we hope not. And so hopefully they learn that lesson. And so the mass of the bullet much less, and so the acceleration of the bullet much more for the same force. Same thing, right, as the Earth. Forces are the same. Mass is huge for the gun compared to the mass of the bullet. So the acceleration of the gun very small, but noticeable in this case. Acceleration of the bullet much greater. So don't be on the bullet end of a gun. And how about a bug splattering on a windshield, which received the greatest force? Hopefully you've got these down now. Uh, you don't even have to pause it. You know the answer is they each receive, receive this equal force. You know something's different, but that is the acceleration. So the bug had a much larger acceleration. The car would slow down a little bit when the bug hit it, depending on how, the, uh, how you adjusted the accelerator when that happened. But the forces are the same. Mass is very different, so the acceleration is very different. And what was the last thing to go through the bug's mind? His butt. So hopefully you understand Newton's third law now and won't get tricked by these questions. The key thing, go back to that original statement, know that, use it, apply it.